Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I titled it Underground. I always like to explain that I come up to China. I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran and other places uh, throughout the world where the uh, uh, body of Christ is expanding right now. We're in that last final harvest for when we go up before uh, God, when we're called up into the clouds. And that's what we're waiting on is the pre-tribulation rapture. The whole idea for his channel is to give everything to God and be uplifting for each other. Uh, you have to excuse me. I, I'm fighting off a, a cold. I've been sick this week, and, and I, I, I'm cancer-free, but my immune system is low. So every time, certain times of year, I get, I'm get i really susceptible to uh, colds, and they, they get me down pretty good. Um, my, me and my son, I watched the grandkids a couple weeks ago, and Jake and I have both been sick last couple of weeks because of uh, after watching the grandbaby, especially the one year old, he had it pretty good. So it kicked our butts, you know. So kids bounce back quicker than as you get to be an adult. And so I, I say that to, uh, uh, so it's, it's been rough. It's rough making videos. It's taken me. It take me a while. Yeah, I actually I took a nap before I tried this one just to see if I can take a nap and help me do it. Uh, but uh, it, it it's rough. Sometimes I stop and start over, and it's just what we have to deal with. So, but we'll we'll carry on. I, I make these videos. I started four years ago as a testimony to God. Uh, when I first uh, you know was going through my cancer and everything and survived and. Just telling how God's helped me in my life. And I want to do this to for all my brothers and sisters to, to be encouragement and to help them, especially now in rough times. And the reason why the times are rough is because Satan knows that when we have a short period of time before we're going up, he knows this better than we do. And so he don't know the day or the hour he's looking for because that starts the war in heaven. And so uh, he's attacking us, trying to deny it, because if we deny it, we don't go. And I'm very strong about that adamant i try not to be dogmatic about things because i'm not absolute i'm still learning and it's it's a process we go through it's a walk it's our spiritual maturity that we have with, with uh jesus christ and, and god we have the indwelling of the holy spirit and it guides us i saw can you have so many different people take a bible read it and different uh, viewpoints and different things and be like I understand, this is what it says, this and this, and someone just throws Bible verses at you, and, and you're like, wait a minute. You know, I've had people in comments, and I appreciate the comments. I, I look forward to them. Uh, I want to help others. And I open up about things in my life. I'm about to tell a story about me and Jacob, Jacob in a minute. I think it's important. And so uh, by opening up, I, I, I give, my, give myself to others to help them. So they can uh, uh, come to know Christ in their relationship. That's that's what it's all about. I did a, a video a long time ago about uh, where I had this theory, and, and maybe it's a foolishness uh, to me. But I believe uh, the promised land is uh, Eden, and then east of Eden, if you look at the promised land promised to the Israelites, to the east is Jerusalem. And that's, that's where I think the garden was. Uh, the Temple Mount area, that's, everybody's fighting for a Temple Mount. God could put his temple everywhere, but why in Jerusalem? Right? Why right there? And, and I'll know shortly, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, whenever we go to God, I'll know the answer to this, but why there? And I believe that's where God walked with Adam in the afternoons. It talks about in the Garden of Eden, they walked side by side in the afternoon because uh, God always wants a personal relationship with us. It's always been that way with God. It's all about God and we're his creation. And uh, I, I decided I was looking at different things for this video and I had a comment from, uh, uh, and I apologize if I don't pronounce the name correctly, from Carl Polden, 433. Uh, Carl Poden, 4033. I'm sorry, I have, I have trouble with my speech sometimes. 
but he sent me a comment talking about how he uh, looks forward to meeting me. I know here on earth we won't meet, but in heaven. And uh, I, I'm going to be looking for him. That's my brother in Christ. That's my point. We have that yearning for each other. And that's the reason I titled this Rapture Then Friendships for Eternity. You know, we have our eternity together. And whether in low uh, 78, uh, he's my autistic brother, you know, and he always wants to put something out there. So I say, you know, send me a comment and I'll always say something that a message that you want to give because he's so eager to help out uh, the body of Christ. And his message or what I gather he would, he would like for me to say, because this is for him, is stay strong in prayer because he had mentioned prayer to me a few times and how he's praying. He's awesome. And these both are my brothers that I look forward to meeting. And I apologize. I have to, my nose is like a faucet, and I have to drink air every now and then. Uh, because if I don't, I start coughing, then it gets real bad. But we're family, and we're, we're about to have a big reunion in the sky and uh, be with each other. And it means so much. I want to give real quick, uh, I throw things out there, and there's a lot of YouTube channels I look at. I do my studies throughout the day and uh, that I refer other people to. I don't always agree 100% with these guys, but they, they're trying to do, like one of them, Repo Man 64 He's always watching, setting dates, trying to find the rapture. Um, he means well. <laughs> no one knows that they are. They are uh, but he puts it in times, you know, this time to this time or in this. And he's constantly looking, and, and I think that's good. We ought to be watchmen. We ought to be looking. Uh, but I, I have a list of people I look at, and it's hanging out with Stan, Melvin McComer, TLL End Times, Watchman River by Tom Coat, Watchman on the Wall 88 by Chad, Watchman Adam, New News by Ross, Generation 2434 by Tyler, Dr. Barry All, End Time Dream and Vision, Steve Fletcher, 222, Last Days of Waiting by Jimmy Root. And then, of course, you have some other ministers like Jimmy Root, like Robert Breaker and uh, J.D. Frog and Brett at Athe Creek. And I do look at some stuff with the, you know, on the Prophecy Watchers channel. I don't always agree. And I admit that I don't always agree 100% with these people on some things, you know, and they it, it just this is how it is. Because a lot of them will push out that uh, left behind, you know, those left behind leave messages and stuff. Or uh, That's good for those that have not heard the gospel, but I'm always big about those left behind. Uh, many of them aren't saved. And that's because of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, where it talks about uh, how God will send strong delusion. And that's for those like, like my oldest son doesn't believe with God. And he says, well, you're raptured. I'll understand. No, because you won't know. You'll be deluded. You won't know. You have your opportunity now because you've heard the gospel. I've, I've talked it and talked it and talked it. You can make your choice. I know God's about second, third, and fourth chances, but understand when there's a time, he puts a limit and says, this is it. That's it. Because it's they're yearning for the world more than they're yearning for God, and they're living for the world, and they won't come out of this because they, they live for the world. Excuse me. Uh, but I wanted to get into, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of times people talk rapture and there's arguments about a pre-tribulation rapture or a mid-tribulation rapture or post-tribulation rapture or even no rapture at all. Um, to give an understanding, I think a lot of people don't teach correctly. Uh, and, and when I say teach, I'm using God's scripture. I'm not a teacher. I don't claim to be a teacher. I just break down the word uh best I can. There's a pre-tribulation rapture. That's one we're waiting for right now. That's for the body of Christ. Uh, Mid-tribulation rapture will be the uh, two witnesses that go up. And then post-tribulation rapture, there's going to be two of them. Uh, the martyred saints and everybody called to Armageddon. And I'll get into that uh, real quick. There's so many people coming to this channel. So there's so many new people. That's the reason why I do this uh, rapture part to give understanding far as I understand at this point, I did a video a long time ago and said eight biblical raptures according to scripture. Well, now I, I, I'm updating it to 11. I apologize. I have, uh, because of my cancer, some other issues, I have short-term memory problems. 
So I go back and restudy, which it's, in a way it's a blessing because I'm constantly going over and over, restudying, restudying, restudying. Uh, but there's there are things like uh, someone caught, uh, commented Mr. Man after that video and said, you forgot about Paul and, and John. So there's two people there that raptured I forgot about. So that changed it from 8 to 10. And then when I redid a, a updated version, and uh, I think I titled it All About Rapture, I, I put in Isaiah because I forgot it wasn't just a vision he had. He was actually raptured up because it talks about the angel touching his lips because he was not pure to be in that presence of God. He would have died. So uh, you have to make mistakes. That's how we learn. But 11 biblical raptures, according to Scripture, Enoch, Genesis 5, 21 through 24, Hebrews 11, 5. And he walked, Enoch walked, and uh, was taken up, sorry. Elijah, 2 Kings 2, 11, he was taken up in the whirlwind. Isaiah, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, uh, was taken up to heaven with a vision. Jesus' ascension, Acts 1, 9 through 11, uh, was a uh, rapture. Philip, Acts 8, 26 through 40. He was not taken up. He was taken from one spot and carried to another. Paul, 2 Corinthians 2, 12. It talks about a doorway opened up in heaven. So he's raptured up for a vision. John, Revelation 4, 1 through 2. He was raptured up uh, to heaven. That's how he was able to write the book of Revelation. Now, before I get into these next uh, uh, four uh, raptures, I'm going to explain. Uh, because of my short-term memory, I, I'm trying to redo this and remember off the top of my head. The English word rapture is not in the Bible, and people get hung up about that. Uh, the Bible was written in the New Testament, Old Testament, Greek, and the Old Testament in Hebrew with some forms of Arabic. Can't understand the Bible with the Western mindset. Uh, totally, you understand the Bible with the indwelling of the Holy Ghost as being born again. Do you really know the Bible? That's what the Holy Ghost does. It guides us in our, strict, our daily walk with God. And... Uh, it helps if you look at the Middle East and know the culture. It gives you better understanding to the Bible. And so, uh, I'm sorry, my, my train of thought there, clicking around there in my old man's head. So, harpazo is the Greek word that uh, we get rapture, rapture, Latin, or we get English word rapture. We know harpazo by phrases, caught up, taken away, translated, departed. Uh, in other words, it's going from one spot to another. That's what a rapture is. And it also means ecstasy, or it's joyful. So, these seven were, were raptures like Philip. He was taken, but he wasn't caught up to heaven, but he was caught up from one spot to another. Now we get into what we're waiting now. is the pre-tribulation rapture. The body of Christ. Where, where Jesus comes in the cloud calls us, and those that are dead in Christ first, he comes with their souls, right? Because he, he died. Jesus Christ was dead for three days and, and resurrected, came back to life. He went down in the center of earth and went to the keys, like I said, the keys of Hades, wherever, that he, he saw that he improved, you know, he conquered death. But beside him was Abraham's bosom, so he had to go over there and witness to them. Their souls went up to heaven. Because at that point, what happens when we die? Our souls go up to heaven. So the souls go up to heaven. Well, they're coming down with Jesus when he comes in the clouds. They'll get the glorified bodies. Those bodies will come out of the grave. And they will come up and they'll meet in the clouds. And be together and get glorified bodies. We're changed in twinkling of an eye. Do we go up quick or slow? I don't know. We're changed immediately. Twinkling of an eye means more than the light reflect on our, on our uh, pupil of our eye. We can be quick, it, uh, you know, whatever. And then we will go up and be with those brothers and sisters in Christ that had just got transformed. And then we will be with Jesus Christ and we will go to heaven and forever be with him because we are his. We're his family. So that's awesome. That's what we're looking for. And that's what's about to take place. And how we know that by the scriptures given to us. Matthew 24, 36 through 51. Jesus Christ himself. And then for the four scriptures given through Paul's teachings, Paul always taught pre-tribulation rapture. And that's 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 17. 
He always taught pre-tribulation rapture. People want to argue that. That's because people don't want to, uh, people can't see it. If you're not born again, you can't see it. And you're not going to be part of it if you're not born again. Uh, Jesus Christ gave the parable in Matthew 25, 1 through 12, where it talks about the uh, ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. They represent the church. It talks about the wedding feast. That's an example of the rapture. That's about exactly what's going to happen to us. We're the bride. And, and Jesus is the groom. And we're going to spend seven years uh, as, as long as the wedding feast is seven days. It'll be seven years during the whole seven-year tribulation. We are not here for the seven-year tribulation. Daniel chapter 9 explains all that. I've done this in previous videos, especially verses 924 through 927. Gives you the whole reason for the seven-year tribulation. It's not for the body of Christ. It's for uh, the Jewish people to make iniquity, uh, uh, make up for their iniquities, and, and, and come back in obedience uh, with God. It's bringing the Jewish people back. Now, pre-tribulation rapture, Jude 14, talks about how we Jesus comes back with tens of thousands of his saints. That's us, all right? We're his glory. We're saints, all right? Don't go by the Catholic Church. They don't know nothing about saints and all that stuff. No, they're not even the true church of God. Never was. We uh, will come back. We're, Jesus comes in all his glory to, to help him, and he will uh, judge. So uh, we, we come back with him, and uh, apologize, that's my short-term memory. I, I was trying to get a point, and it just skipped. And I apologize, it happens sometimes, but I hate to start videos over too much because then I miss things. It'll come back to me if God wants it or uh, some other way. But I'm talking about how, how we uh, come back with God. Uh, we either we're, we prove His glory and we are the uh, saints that He comes back with. Sorry, maybe I'll catch it in a minute. So, that's pre tribulation rapture. All right. The mid tribulation rapture is the two witnesses. That's Revelation 11, 3 through 12. It talks about the two uh, that die in, in, for three and a half days and then are uh, uh, brought back to life and then taken up to heaven. That's talking about one of, we know one's Elijah. We don't know the other one. It's, it, people think it's Moses. And I say it's either Moses or Enoch, either one. Those are the two that it would be. Then, sorry, excuse me. Revelation 14, 14 through 16, the martyred saints. Those that have uh, died during the seven-year tribulation. Uh, I'm back to, Now I'm getting my train of thought there about seven-year tribulation. I'm about to go back. Uh, those that died the seven-year tribulation. Had to give their lives because we're gone. They don't have to get the grace. The only way they're saved is if they don't live through it, they you know they they die. They're martyred. They their their souls come down just like pre-tribulation rapture. Those that died in Christ, well, these martyred will get get the glorified bodies as we're coming down with them. Jesus Christ, the souls follow us and they get the glorified bodies. And then Revelation 14, 17 through twenty, when we touch the ground. All come to Armageddon for judgment. Remember I talked about Philip, where he was taken from one spot to another? That's the way God does that, for examples. Well, that's going to bring everybody to Armageddon for judgment. Now, understand it's symbolic. You know, Revelations is tough for some people, but it, to me, I don't, but it's simple. But when it talks about, you know, Revelation 14, 14 through 16, excuse me, that's uh, Jesus Christ talked about the sickle coming as the Son of God in Son of Man in the clouds, bringing uh, for the martyred saints. And then it talks about an angel with a sharp sickle bringing in the rest. That's like Matthew 13 when it talks about sending the angels out to bring back the elect. That's what that's all about. That happens. It's the wheat and tares. It's the sheep and the goats. Everything right there in our, what happens right there in Armageddon. And so that that's what's going to take place. But my train of thought before, <laughs> I'm so I also apologize, was the fact that uh, the seven-year tribulation, uh, they'll be Gentiles, 
in other areas of the world that do not hear the gospel. It's a big world, people. There's 8 billion people on this earth. So there's areas where people don't hear the gospel. They'll hear the gospel. There's 144,000 Jewish leaders that's going to go out, pretty dang priests, supernaturally protected, have all the gifts of the Spirit. They can speak in different languages and tongues, speak in different tongues, talk to these tribes in different areas of the world and witness and bring them to God. Okay? That's, that's where we're at right now. So, uh, so during the seven-year tribulation, there's because there's 12 million Jews on the face of the earth, the eye, especially their eyes are going to be open to who Jesus Christ is. Whether they accept or not is their choice. And then you have all these Gentiles. How many? We don't know. So there are millions that will be saved during the seven-year tribulation. Because it talks in uh, Revelation 7, chapter 7, a vast number. That's awesome. Now, for the pre-tribulation uh, rapture, it talks about tens of thousands. Remember, that includes those that have died in Christ before. So there's only, excuse me, a few thousand. That's not even a million. And a lot of people got not to me about that. I'm, I'm sorry. I go by what the scripture says. And, and they're like, uh, well, how come there's not, I mean, that's not many. That's not. Remember, when God, Noah's flood, there's only eight people on that ark. There was billions of people back then. Some try to say their lifespans were longer than one as many people as... It doesn't matter. Think about it. Even if there's four billion back then, there's, there's only eight people saved out of all that. God's judgment is exact. And I understand, also, they had mixed DNA. They had mixing from the Nephilim through generations. That's just why it says Noah and his family, they were, Noah was righteous in his generations. He was a righteous man, but he was also righteous in his generations, meaning he didn't have mixed DNA in him. Because if they got the mixed DNA, they couldn't be saved. So that means at the flood, all those children, you know, you have the age of innocence, they weren't saved. They had mixed DNA. It's rough, but it's the truth. God didn't, that was a creation that God didn't mean. Now, pre tribulation rapture, this point, like my grandkids, they'll be going up. They're saved. Anybody with disabilities, uh, problems, not our understanding, God has mercy. They're saved. Now, when it talks about the tens of thousands, that's not included in the number, even though they'll be with us. But we don't know how children are. We don't know. I've got three grandkids that, that didn't uh, make it to birth that uh, uh, died, one just recently. So uh, are they... Uh, Formed to what? I mean, of course, they're going to be, but are they going to be babies? You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a one year old grandson. He goes up. Now, will he be a baby and having to learn a process? Or we don't know because it doesn't say. I'm a simple man. I do these videos for, for you for love, but understand there's things I don't understand, and I accept that. I allow that. When man tries to think, we think with the flesh. We're limited. And we try to outthink God. A man tries to be smart. The more he tries to be smart, the more he's foolish. Now, let me get into uh, my story before I even get into the scriptures. I know this takes a while, but I want to want to be open to you. I was thinking the other day, I was talking to somebody how uh, Jacob just got, I baptized Jacob right before Christmas. It was awesome. And uh, we couldn't go anywhere. He wanted to be baptized in the nearby lake, which I was going to do over there. Uh, across town, but it, it, you know, 20 degrees outside, I didn't think it was going to happen. So uh, we checked around. He didn't even go to some strange church and trying to get do it there. And I said, I understand. And my daughter had a garden tub because Jake's six foot eight. So she's because uh, maybe baptize him there. And and uh, we we talked about it for a week, and then uh, I called her up and. On a Friday, and then that Sunday, she was we were going to do it, and then sure enough, she got busy and forgot she's supposed to do Christmas cookies at a friend's house, and so doing Christmas cookies was more important than trying to baptize her brother. I smile, but it's disgusting. So what we did that day, me and Jake, he was so disrupt. I said, let's just I'll turn on the shower, dip your head in the shower, and you'll be baptized. It's symbolic. 
uh, sometimes you're in a situation where you can't have, like I had a conversation with the minister. I was upset with the minister and I stopped going to that church. Uh, but uh, we were talking and he, he got up in front of everybody and told a story about how he knew someone wasn't going to go to heaven. He was going to hell because he didn't get baptized. And what it was is this man, I knew him, he had a cancer at the hospital and, and he was dying and he had had it for a long time. But he had come to know God. We well, wanted to be baptized uh, before he died, and they uh, uh, tried to. They were going to do it's a bunch of process. I understand his body and all the stuff on him. He's going to go downstairs, put him in the whirlpool, kind of dip him there. And the family, they were fighting back and forth. They didn't want to do it, believe it or not. His family didn't want to mess with doing this. And so during this process, he died. So that minister said that man went to hell. I was like, excuse me. He said, yeah. He for 17 years I preached to him and. He wouldn't when he was able to be baptized. And then when it came to it, uh, he, he didn't make it. And I was like, well, baptism, the thief on the cross, Jesus Christ changed things. Yes, he was baptized. He had to do for his ministry. He had to go for, for the laws. But everything changed. He made an eighth covenant. He changed, his sacrifice changed everything. And he, that's just when he told that thief that you'll be with me in paradise because he recognized who he was and asked for, for forgiveness. And Jesus died on the cross for that he did. So the thief uh, got to, you know, be with him in paradise. So I was, I was wrong for what that minister said to those people, misled those people. Well, Jacob, he, like I said, let's do this. So we, he, he sprinkled, you know, put his head in the shower. And I said, you know, because I explained to him, now you're baptized. He's like, yes. So the, the heavens are rejoicing right now. You know, what are you talking about? The angels in heaven, everybody saw you be baptized, Jacob. God and everybody. So then he was nervous. He's like, these people are watching me? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, with my, my Jacob is Asperger's, a form of autism. He's bipolar. And I say this for a reason. It's been a struggle, but it's been such a blessing with Jacob. Jacob's been a constant struggle. I remember uh, he's big, you know, in, in danger. It, it's bipolar. It's under control now. We get a shot once a month. It's $2,800 for the shot. If it weren't for the insurance, I couldn't afford this for him to get a shot. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Our, our med medicine's here. But it helps him control his, his bipolar is anger, and he can't control it. When he was 17, 18 years old, uh, we, we were living... And I remarried my wife. Yes, I should not have done that. Yes, people, I know. We are separated now. A lot of people have got asked me, yo, you remarried your ex-wife? I had forgiveness. I was wrong. I should not have, because once you're divorced, I should be divorced. The reason for divorce was correct. She was in, unfaithful many times over. And I should not have, but I believed in forgiveness. And I knew she grew up in an abusive situation. And so she'd done counseling. And I, I, we were divorced 13 years. I thought things were changed. And, Unfortunately, no. But anyways, I always put out. I get personal because I show how God can help us in a fallen state. So uh, she did. She was pushing me that that time here around seventeen, eighteen, rough time. That's before we got him on the correct medication, and it was a lot of violent threats and stuff, and and uh, they they were arguing. And he was, but generally he went for a walk and was good. Well, I kept telling her, you don't get up in his face or in his space. Let him, whatever. Well, she's like, well, this is our house. This is, well, actually, was saying this is my house and it's our house. But she's like, he's not going to talk this way. And I was like, let it go. You got, because I work with people. Uh, I was operation manager for uh, Red Door Industries. We work with people with disabilities. It's a job I had many years before. I worked with all kinds of uh, people, teaching them job skills and things like that. So I had the experience, but my wife wouldn't listen to nobody. And so uh, I said, just walk away, let him go. And he'll, we could talk it out. Well, she got into his face, and I, and I knew, I knew that that anger is situation. You got to let him vent. You got to let him get back. I knew it was going to get violent. I knew from experience. Sorry, I got up there real quick. And as I stepped between him, and I actually, I physically pushed her back and said, stop. Get back away from him. He swung because his, his hand, like the whole hot, hot, I'm at the width of my head. I mean, just wham. 
And uh, me, immediate, you know, because he just went in, and I just like, uh, the way that, that right there was his bedroom, but the door was shut. Because it was the bedroom, and then the kitchen, and then the master bath. There was another room, a bathroom, and then uh, master bath, bedroom, and bathroom. So the door was shut, and I just immediately, he, he hit me, and I turned, because he's a big boy. I just nailed him, pushed him through that door. I mean, we went, we annihilated that door. I flipped him, flipped him over on his bed, slung him around, and popped him, and, and it blood choking. It was over two, three seconds, and he was out, he was totally out. This is what I did in the military. I trained combat <laughs> for many years. I instructed, so just pop, 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 it's out. I said, leave him alone. I'm going for a walk, and I'll be back in a minute. Just kind of let my adrenaline uh, calm down. And when I came back, I walked in the kitchen. She was sitting on the bed, and then she had a different attitude with him, you know. You know and he was down there, and he was crying. And, and she said, well, you hit your father. You know you should. And uh, uh, he, he was like, I, never, I wouldn't do that. Respect that. I would never hit him. See, he, at that time, he didn't know when things would get bad. Uh, the anger built up. He didn't know what he, he didn't, even to this day, he don't remember it hitting me. And so, uh, but that's what you have to deal with. And my wife wanted me to send him to a group home. And I was like, no, I'm not sending him to a group home. I will take care of him. He is my son. You do not give up on your family. There's issues in the family. You take care of your family. All right. I didn't quit on him. So, uh, not long after that, we moved to a different town. And uh, uh, my father moved in with us. His health was bad. He needed care. So I was taking care of him. And, and this is a few years later when my father moved in. And uh, now at this point, we was able to get the medication for Jacob. And he's fantastic, no problems. Well, my father moved in. And then my, my wife gave me an ultimatum and said, because she was tired of us taking care of both. And she's like, either me or them gave me an ultimatum. So I said, bye. Of course, she, she left. Two, two, three weeks later, she comes back because she couldn't. Uh, make it on her own working and then she moved in uh, back with me but I knew it'd just be a matter of time before she'd move out there's no doubt in my mind and then about four years later she moved out uh, it is what it is I took care of my father I mean he wiped his butt I mean <laughs> you lose your dignity I'm taking care of him as depends as a, and uh, so I'm cleaning him up and he's like oh, I'm sorry I said don't worry about this just let's not let the world know that I'm I'm, I'm looking at another man's butt. And we would laugh. I do things like that to make him laugh. Eventually, he had to go in a wheelchair. My back was messed up, so I couldn't lift him. And he, he fell a lot, and so uh, he had to go in the nursing home. He he was there for about two years before he passed away. That last year was rough because he got dementia, and uh, he didn't know me then. I would come in there and talk to him and try to feed him, but he didn't know me. That's life. Now, I've done all that talking to know that uh, God gives us things in life to go. And with Jacob, I didn't quit and, and look at him now, you know. Unfortunately, my other two kids are not living godly lives. I've always stayed around. I had opportunities when my wife and I were divorced for 13 years and we were married. There's many opportunities I had to go away for work and stuff. But instead, I decided to stay and be with family. I made that commitment to God. I remember in prayer a long time ago. And so, uh, uh, God's always been there for me. And so, uh, it is what it is. Well, now I've talked a lot. Let's get, let's get into the study. Um, you know, I do this to, like I said, to open and, and under, give understanding. No matter what, we could we work through things. All right, God's there for us. No matter how bad it gets, I've had so many brothers and sisters that, that have committed suicide. I mean, dear friends of mine, my commander, I came back from Iraq three months later, committed suicide. It's overwhelming, but God is always there for you. This channel has grown. Last two, three months, I've given everything to God. I've been doing this for four years, had 20 some odd subscribers. Now it's grown so much. I looked recently to see how many, and it's up to 731. That's not me. <laughs> I've done it for four years at <laughs> 21. And so it's not my words. <clears throat> it's God. This is all about God. And so as we're getting closer to that day, 
uh, it's all about God. Now, you see my knuckles. I, I have a wing chun dummy in the other room. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll mention it because I know people look at my knuckles. I, that, I'm just a physical man. Always will be. Always been combative. So that's just how God made me. So that's why my knuckles are the way they are. Even as an old man, I still train. So uh, well, the guy don't, he's not clean. I'm clean. I bathe. That's just uh, hard knuckles. Um, every now and then someone, you know, I know they see that, especially on my left hand. My left shows more on my right. So this is what it is. <laughs> Let me get sidetracked there. Um, I look so much forward uh, that we'll, we'll be together in heaven soon. And I look for that. But like I said, this channel's up to 731. Uh, I did a channel analysis, and, and it's like 34,000 people have looked at these videos overall. And uh, that could close the whole four years. But uh, almost 400 videos have been shared. I didn't even think about anybody sharing a video of mine. Uh, and I say mine, I mean, when I talk about God. And so this is working for God. This is working for the kingdom. Like I said, I'm a disabled veteran, so I don't get out as much. Uh, yeah, I do the combat training, but it's like not every day because my health, my back, I can't do it every day. Uh, but I still do it. Um, but that, that's where we're at right now. Rapture them friendships for eternity. And this is what this is all about. We're going to meet. There's people like Carl said somebody he looked forward to meeting me. And I, man, I can't wait to meet Carl in heaven. Uh, it's so many. Weatherlow said, he, I can't wait to see my brother. You know, everybody I've talked to, Mr. Man, everybody's made comments on my channel. And I'm sorry, I should write a list down, but uh, my memory. But believe me, that's it means a lot. So I want to go uh, in Jesus' own words, John 17, 1 through 26. This is Jesus' incessory prayer to God for us. And it says so much in this uh, prayer. It talks about that I thought that was be important for today. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Jesus is about to make that sacrifice for us. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He's talking about himself. He's our shepherd. We're his sheep. And this is life eternal, that they might know that thee, only the true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus for us, by God. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me. He done his work for the heavenly kingdom. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Uh, the purity and the deity of Jesus Christ, uh, way before the earth was formed. I have manifested thy name unto me, which thou gavest me out of the world, thine that they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word, uh, saved us out of darkness. Now that they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, through Jesus we know God our Father. For I have given unto them the words, for the gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I, I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou sentest me. It's our faith in Christ. We know, we have faith, we believe that God sent his only begotten son for us. And I pray for them, I pray not for the world. He didn't come to, Jesus Christ in his own world says he came to separate families. Father from son, son from father, mother from daughter, Daughter-in-law from mother-in-law, mother-in-law from daughter-in-law. He says that in the scriptures. Uh, he came for us. And uh, we're not to love our family more than we are to love God. Yes, like I said, I sacrificed a lot for the kids because I love them. And it, it, it was worth it. Uh, I wish I had all three kids. And I still pray. My wife and my oldest son and my, my daughter, I pray all the time for them. But to know at least one Without doubt, my mind is saved. It's so overwhelming the blessing from God. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given, for they are mine. Yes, I said it again. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. I am glorified in them. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So by us being saved, it's, it shows glory to him. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those thou Ask given me that they may be one 
as we are one, we're all God's family, brothers, sisters in Christ, and we're about to be together for eternity in heaven. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that gave us me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, but the scripture might be fulfilled. This is talking about 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 17, where it talks about how the indwelling Holy Ghost uh, falling away. A lot of people talk about that being apostasia. All right. Apostasia meaning the, the, the teachings of the church, doctrine, false doctrine, falling away. Yes. But if you look at the context, and I'm big about context, that's why I do whole chapters when I study. But if you look at the context, uh, Paul's talking about, uh, I don't think it has nothing to do with apostasia. In the uh, Geneva 1560 Bible, and I'm looking up at it as my other uh, Bible. I have a lot of versions of early Bibles. Um, it says departure. And I don't think it's departure from teaching. It's departure from this world. It's a harpazo. And we are taken up before the Antichrist comes about. Why? Because we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have the salt and light of this earth. Once we are gone, because we have prayer, we do different things. Prayer warriors, different, different aspects of the body of Christ. Once we're gone, this earth immediately gets very dark and very chaotic. And out of the chaos comes the Antichrist. He's going to say, I'm going to solve all these problems. So we have to be gone first. Because it says in there, son of perdition, exactly in there. Well, that's, that's what he's talking about. The Antichrist, the son of perdition. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. It should be joy for us. No matter what happened, I, I got a lot of financial problems. I mean, right now, my health is getting worse. I'm having some issues with kidneys and everything else. I've had three surgeries this summer, three or four surgeries. Everything's going on. My finances, my bank account's in the hole every month. Matter of fact, I think they might be coming to get my truck in a couple months. I'm trying my best to keep everything. I'm limited. Now, my wife, we're separated. She lives on her own, but I'm paying for all that. Uh, this is what it is, people. Uh, she didn't want this house. A tree fell in this house last year. Contractors did not finish the work. Uh, the stuff in this house is, is crazy. It's been a fight. They got paid. They've already been paid, and they, they put a roof on. Supposedly, they put 20, 23 rafters in my roof. They didn't put a single one. They took two by fours. I had someone go up there for me to take pictures. They just put boards and, and rebuilt the roof by using boards on the old bus <laughs> from the tree. And it's and my roof goes like this, you know, and it's it's funny. Uh, they're supposed to rebrick the front of the house because the front of the roof, the house, the brick is like this. They didn't rebrick any of it. You walk into my house, there's a closet that's leaning at an angle. I mean, I could go on and on. No molding in the house. The floors are supposed to have been done, weren't done. And there's so much, people. And uh, it is, is what it is. I laugh and smile because me and Jake know we're going to go God soon. We're going to go in a better house than this. But I still have to pay my wife for half this house because we separated and she don't live here. So that's what I'm doing. And she's taking her money and she's living in her nice apartment and all the fancy stuff. I don't mean regret that. I, I actually ask for prayer for her because I want her to come to God before we go up. I do this. I pray for her daily. Everybody in my family. Even my oldest son who says the Bible's fables. And I've come close to wanting to knock his teeth in. I'll be honest with you. I think there's a righteous anger. Because I really like to knock his block off. Uh, have we ever been fiscal? Oh, yeah. We've, we've gotten fiscal. It's, it's been enough that uh, uh, he's six foot four. He, he's so cocky. He thinks he can... The old man's humped over. I can't stand up straight. I've got a bad back. Uh, he just thinks he can do what he can do. Unreal. I have given them thy word, and the word hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We don't belong to this world. We may live here, but we don't belong. Some people have that sense of not belonging. Well, that's because we don't. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest take, keep them from the evil protection over us. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're not in the darkness. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Through the scripture. Study the scripture daily. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world to work, build the kingdom of God. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth, having faith. 
Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the word may believe that thou hast sent me. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is in all of us. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and that hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, how we live our lives, the world looks at us and sees us. Father, I will have that they will also whom thou hast given me, but with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest, lovest me before the foundation of the world, eternity. Foundation of the world. I think of a, uh, someone talked to me a while back, young man that I hadn't seen in a long time. I was in Walmart trying to get groceries. And uh, he come up and he's, he's turned his life to God. He was one of the teenagers that my kids grew up with. I call them boys. I call them all my kids. And we hugged on each other and he was talking. He had tears in his eyes. I kind of was embarrassed because uh, uh, it was just an overwhelming emotional moment, you know. And so that's God. You know, we don't, you know, cry or anything like that. So, uh, both had tears, and he's, he's now in a relationship, and he has a couple kids, he's working hard, he's been through some rough, I mean, we're talking drugs and everything else, he's been through some rough stuff, and we were talking about it, and he was talking about the, the world being flat, he's he's doing some stuff in studies, he says, uh, we were talking different things about God, you know, and, and, and I don't always talk to the kids about God, so that's what he was telling me about, he was so excited to see me. Cause I'd always talk to him about God. We'd go out in the backyard, I had a punching bag, we'd punch on it, and then talk about God and stuff. And uh, he was like, "What's your viewpoint?" And I was like, "Well, I, to be honest, uh, I know we live in deception. There's a lot of times people say, and some people talk about being flat, some about round, and, and, and people mock each other. I never did a study on that. I never really cared. <laughs> I, you know, I don't." I do not say not the possibility to some things in the scripture. Uh, and that's what he was excited about. That's I said, if you want to study that, uh, because we had a long talk, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what, what he was looking at research. I was like, research it. There's nothing wrong in that. Um, I just haven't had the desire. To, that's not where God's led me. That doesn't mean someone else can't be. Led. We got different parts of the body, you know, so. But I can't say either way. Uh, as far as I understand, you know, I remember talking to a YouTube pilot back in 1986, 86, 87, when I was overseas on Guam. Uh, I was over there doing some stuff, and and uh, we talked. And, of course, YouTube pilots are supposed to be not flying no missions and stuff. Well, they still were. And they're way up there. And so uh, I remember talking about the curvature of the Earth to him, far up as he is. So... I'm not going either way. That's not important. But I put that in there and make it in this for the reason is sometimes we get sidetracked. All right. So I didn't want to discourage him. You know, Paul talks about some people he milk. He kept getting the milk for scripture instead of the meat because the meat's for the more mature Christian. So I just encourage him being God's word and just find out, make your walk with God. And that's what it's all about. And so that's just why I won't talk bad about him on something like that. Uh, looking at something like that, I, I, don't have a problem with it. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and those have known that thou hast sent me. Talk about light out of darkness. I don't think you hear that fire truck go by. And I have declared unto them that I name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. It's love eternal. People sometimes have trouble with their relationships. Some people, you know, might have a trouble finding somebody here on earth. Uh, Jacob made a comment the other day. He says, I'll, I'll not know, uh, you know, being married and having kids. And I'm like, yes, but you've got family in heaven waiting on you. And things are different. Uh, we we look at, we're here in the flesh and I'm in a, a corruptible body, but we're going to be in an incorruptible body. I look forward to it because when I do these videos, I'm not covered up so you don't hear my gas. I've got a cosmic bag. It makes all kinds of racket and I can't control it. So I've got all kinds of stuff wrapped around me just to do videos. It's uncomfortable and I hate that. And then I sit here and I have back pain and 
and uh, right now I'm getting a headache because of my back, just not sitting here long enough to do this. And this, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I want to be with my family so much, and I want to encourage you that that uh, especially people that <clears throat> are alone or think they're alone, you're not alone. We're all going to be together. And the thing is, we want to be together. You're going to be exciting. You're going to walk around and and, and uh, people are going to be there. They're going to know you. And uh, and that's what I look forward to. A little about the uh, well, change in twinkling of my eye. But, man, I won't have this closet bag anymore. Oh, man. Excuse me. I won't have any digestion problems all the time. And so uh, I just can't. Uh, we're there. We're in that season. We know it's close. It started October the 7th when Hamas attacked Israel, started the Psalm 83 war. They're in the Psalm 83 war before this war is over. At some point, we will be gone. All right? Peace and safety, I'm looking at Israel. It's Israel that says peace and safety, no one else. Israel says peace and safety, or think of peace and safety, then sudden destruction. That's I ran to do the nuclear stuff, but before that happens, we are gone. So I don't think, we'll, you know, We'll, we'll see uh, the end of the Psalm 83 war. I'm surprised we, we saw the beginning of it. But as the body of Christ, we'll know we're in that season. How do we know when the season starts? And that's when the season starts. And we're at the end of harvest time. And more boys from Arkansas went over and helped out. The four boys went and helped out uh, doing stuff. Well, they're going back. The season's over. So I look forward to being any time, any day now to be with, uh, being, uh, going up internet and i look forward to meeting you but please by all means look me up and have a thank you